you are deciding to get into the comic book hobby because it's something interesting in your life and something else to do, if you're bored, comics are fun, then this video is for you. So let's just get started, guys. So interestingly enough, I had a friend at work come up to me, ask me about the comic book thing because he knows that I love comic books. I collect comic books and I talk about them and I talk about the investments and this and that and he wants comic books in his life now. So he asked me about them. He knows nothing about comic books, which is totally fine. There is tons and tons and tons of different style comic books. When you start comic books, you want to start somewhere. So let's let's build them a starter package. You don't have to like any of these books that I that I have and I, that I'm building for them, but it's just starting somewhere with the art and the age of the book. So why don't we go into some of my uh, short boxes, take a look and see if we've got anything there for them. So right here are just a couple of my comic boxes. These right here are plastic containers, perfect for traveling and hard boxes. You can stick a bag and a board perfectly in it. Note though, if the comic books are bagged or boarded, the lid won't fit on these but they are awesome little containers. I actually got these in the garage sale. I got all these comics here, which are pretty pretty sweet comics. Okay. Like, to be honest, guys, I don't even know where to start. Let's open up a long box and go from there. These are all my brand new comics. We'll just wait on these. Once he gets interested in, in reading the comics I give him, you can go to his local LCS new comics that you'll enjoy. So these books right here are the books I'm currently pressing and, and cleaning and through a couple other long boxes that uh, the old man gave me. All right, here are a couple of treasured long boxes. These, these were from childhood. So you can see how old the boxes are. They're actually still in pretty good condition. I, I still today have to board. That's, that's, that's what happens. You start getting into your own books and then you forget about the most important ones. I got a whole bunch of these kinds of books. These are awesome. I got two of those right there. So there you go. These were all my dad's books. He got them in the 90s from a buddy who had an, an LCS that he knew. So he gave them to me. I think that was the best thing he's ever done for me, to be honest. And he asked me, where do I start with comic books? There is no real answer with that. Comics are awesome and there's no better time than to start right now. So there's so much to learn about comics. The variation of the tiers of the book, also the publishers of each book, Marvel, DC, uh, ones and twos, first appearances, big keys, small keys, they, a lot of them are investments. I like to buy comics as investments. And if I buy comics for readers, those are just my run of the mill comics and I just put them on my shelf and I read them. If they end up being worth money one day then that's fine. I'm not going to worry about the condition on those throughout my life, that's for sure. In any collection, I believe the first book you should start with is none other than Mr. Todd McFarlane. It's a Copper Age book, 1990, and it is a key. If you can find one of these, definitely go ahead and throw it in your private collection, also known as PC. You got the Uncanny X-Men 227, Right there, love that cover. Let's go into a better home. A little bit of a minor key. It's got all those appearances there, the X-Men. If you believe it or not, this book right here at a 9.8 was a recent sale for $150. You never know if you keep your books in tip-top shape and go get them graded, they might be worth something, might be worth a lot. And that's, that's what I love about comics. Two little minor keys. Both Copper Age uh, books. We've got this to go over. We got a 2022 modern book here, Blade. We got a Batman Detective 1048. 
think that's a cool cover. And then we got a little Copper Age uh, square bound. So this is the Web of Spider-Man annual number eight. Might be worth something too. I just recently picked up at the garage sale. So we'll give them that Alpha Flight annual one. These ones are kind of cool to have. They were spec hard in the 90s, but I think everybody should have one. We got the Warlock 1 and 2. Everybody's Spirits of the Vengeance number 2. Dirty bag, which we'll just get rid of right now, because we're going to go ahead and rebag and board everything. And this one, Challengers of the Unknown 1991. Dark Ages, I suppose you'd call it. Generally, a number one that's that age in the dark ages if it's a number one it should be worth you know at least five or six bucks instead of a dollar and then there's the number two to go with that we'll add those two to the bundle they're fairly new volume challenges of the unknown goes all the way back to the golden ages i believe those books are worth quite the amounts of money if you want them in a really high grade. Generally what happens when the book gets a little bit older, especially if it's a key, the higher the grade, the higher the price. All right, here's another spec on hard in the 90s book. Cable One, gotta throw one of those into his collection because that's a fun little book right there. 90s art. And what we'll do with these with these books is we'll put nice fresh bags and boards on them. So I think every collection needs a Doom Patrol book in it. This one's a Copper Age number four, 1988. Here we got special Doom Patrol and Suicide Squad. And I think this is a great book to throw into his collection because it's a back cover as well, full art. And also it's a team up. You got the Doom Patrol and you got the Suicide Squad. So it's a kind of a minor key book. Just recently grabbed these from the garage sales. Got Hawk World 1, Hawk World 2, we got Hawk World 3, and we got Hawk World 4. Why not, right? They're better off in his hands than mine. And I don't know what he likes, so I'm just throwing together a book here, all from the Copper Ages and Modern Ages kind of thing. All right, so next we have a, a small run, Star Trek, The Next Generation, Isle of Wind. Number four there, number three there, we got number two there, and we got number one there. Oh, here's a tip, guys. A comic should never sit in a bag like this with this much room, especially without a board. You should always have a little bit of room in between the comic, but never that much because then the comic moves so much and it's actually more damaging for the comic to sit in the bag than it would be to sit outside of it because it's like a hacksaw over the years for your comic. So next up, we got a couple of cool books also got at the garage sale. X-Men Alpha Flight Part 1 of 2 Part Blast from the Past, number one of a two-part blast from the past, X-Men Alpha Flight. And there you go. A book that's just been sitting in my long box forever. Never read it. It's premier issue, Night Cat. I think this is the first appearance, so it's a small little key. It is a square bound book, medium grade. Just a small little reader right there, and he can do as what he wants with it. Also, we got a couple of different comics other than Marvel and DC, so from different publishers right now. Black Star Imperial Comics, number one. So maybe he'll like that, I don't know. I've never read it. Number six, Scout War Shaman. Really like that cover. And this is from Eclipse Comics. It's kind of cool, Vanguard from Image Comics. Love that cover. So you never know, maybe he'll like it as well. We got from Blackthorn Publishing, Freak Out of Infant Earths. Kind of a cool dope cover there. I get rid of these books here. We got Hawk Moon 2 there. I've never heard of Hawk Moon. So this is the first time Hawk Moon 3. And then we got a variant cover of Hawk Moon 3. When I build a bundle, I usually build a pretty nice one. Everybody who starts in the comic world needs to know what a magazine style comic is right there is a magazine style comic so at my lcs i found this good one right here i love this cover this is a vicious circle and this is number one and i got this for two bucks and so i'm gonna give it to him all right guys for just another little tip 
This book right here is a square bound book, right? Is in great shape. None of the corners are damaged. So it doesn't look like it's been read. It doesn't look like it's been opened. A square bound book, and this is for collecting purposes only. This is not for reader purposes. This is if you want to keep really good care of your square bound book. Pay attention. Do you see that little perfect little line that runs all the way down the binding right there of the spine? You see that line? And then you see in the back cover that same line. So that was obviously done at the printing press. From the printing press shipped to distributors and then from the distributors to the LCSs. The customer buys the book. Now what you want to do if you want to collect a square bound book, you right away get the, the size of the bag for the book right here. This is a bag for this book. Okay, it's a magazine style bag. Backer board for that book immediately is you do not start looking inside the pages in your square bound book and start opening up the book, okay? So do not do that because what you're gonna do with that line I showed you is you're going to crack it and you're gonna make hairline cracks all the way down your book and you're never gonna see them right away. But over time, two to three years, maybe 10 years, that binding there is gonna start separating and it's gonna be a big long line of color break. So to prevent that from happening, you cannot open the book fully. If you're ever gonna open the book, it has to just be like this. Don't really open it at all. And then you just wanna throw it in your bag and board and leave it in there and then it's done. This is a brand new magazine bag and this is backer board for the magazine. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold the flap on the bag like this. And this bag right here is a resealable bag. So it's a peel and stick. And then I just pull the flap down and it sticks without using piece of tape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold that flap like this. I'm gonna insert the backer board into the bag, just like this. You see the backer board now drops. All right, so now I'm gonna take my comic and this is a big comic i'm going to start with the the bottom of the spine the corner of the spine at the bottom i'm going to hold the bag just like i showed you and then i'm going to insert the bottom corner at the spine first carefully locate the other side push the top to where i'm going to locate it to the bottom right there about a quarter of an inch to an eighth of an inch never touching the bottom all right and then I'm going to squeeze that backer board right to the bottom of the bag. And then you see the bottom. It doesn't touch, right? So when you place this in the box, on a shelf, you're not damaging the book. We got Nomad number four. This has Deadpool on the front cover right there. We got an 80 page giant Marvel Superhero Summer Edition X-Men. Pretty much the whole team in the front there. Thought it would be fun to throw in an old Bronze Age book. Also, I got this one at the garage sale. Fun little pickup. Nice little book. It's a 25 cent or two. This is Tor number three. This was a high grade book. It would be somewhere around 200 bucks. It is a low grade. So you could probably still get about five to ten dollars for that book. And Bronze Age is from 1984 to 1970. Copper Age 1984 to 1990-91 and your Dark Ages 1991 to 96. Anything above that is considered a modern book, but I tell you there's probably about 50 different style modern books. The paper these days is only getting cheaper and weaker and more terrible. The inks suck. They're very hard books to work with. And you can never add steam to a modern book because the color will just blow right off, which I'm going to make a video about and it's coming soon. Modern books are cool, but the paper sucks. Paper on these books is amazing. Cool one to add to the collection. All right, another cool book I think you should have. The artist John Romita. This is an Iron Man 266. This one's in a new stand. It's about a nine grade to an eight. Super good book to have right there. Throw it in your collection. Probably for around 10 bucks. Given that it's a newsstand, maybe a little more, maybe 15 bucks. If this was a 9.8 newsstand, this would easily be $200, $250 comic graded. 
course. If you were to grade a book like this, you wouldn't want to grade it unless you know for sure it's a 9.8 because you're not going to get any more than $40 for it. It's probably going to cost you around $40 to grade it. So, so just a little bit of advice there when it comes to grading. All right, so now to end off the package with a couple of Submariner books I got at a garage sale recently. So we got Submariner number two, a different Marvel story kind of character comic books. He might like it, he might not. This, this one here is an excellent condition, black cover, newsstand, Submariner number three. This is a bit of an older book. And now for the cherry on top, Tales to Astonish, number nine, Submariner, to go along with those Submariners. I love this red cover. I absolutely love this book. There is a little bit of color fade around the staples, tiny little spine tick, but all in all, for how old this Bronze Age book is, great book to have. This book right here will continue to grow an investment. So, and you wanna make sure that you sandwich them together so that one spine sits opposite side and that not all your spines are sitting on one side and then it becomes like a fan and it's really bad for the book. So this is how you wanna stack them. Here goes like that. And then this one here goes like that. You see how much better that is now? It's so flat. You can stack more books that way and, it, and it's so much more flatter as well. Okay, so now I'm getting the package together and I'm gonna put it inside this box here is handing him the box so it doesn't have to be like for shipping purposes. I'm not going thorough with the packaging, but I am going to put these together and then I'm going to leave his magazine style comic book separate. All right, guys, I'm going to get the package together. As you see, this is blue tape. It's safe on walls and paint. So therefore, it's safe on a comic book and it just easily rips off your comic bag just like that. So this is this is what we're going to use to wrap the bundle together. So first of all, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get a nice piece like this ready to go. From the side there, nice and gently. And folding the tape down. This is the way I like to do it. Just put it on the side there. And then I'll put it standing up. And this one I can just do like that and then just kind of press it together like that. A final tape around just like that. Oh, and there you have it. That is the stack. So I'm actually gonna put a little bit of bubble wrap there. This is a cardstock of the book, like a sandwich. Put it at the bottom of the box nice and firmly. And we're gonna stick the stack right on top of that. And make sure that you look around the, the book that you just put it on. If there's nothing obtruding or nothing bent or anything. I'm just gonna take the little bit of bubble wrap. The box is not getting shipped, but it is being transported. So I do wanna stuff, I do wanna stuff the quarters. It gives it so it doesn't move around. And then we're gonna put down the flaps. on it and there you go that's it you're gonna be really happy with that oh you don't hear it you know for two minutes of packing not that hard to make a proper box all right so i think that was a great little starter package right here i think there was a lot of insight on that it gave you square bound books uh new books old books different kinds of papers different kinds of publishers uh, different kinds of genres, different stories, uh, minor keys, and a couple of books to hold on to for investments. Let me know in the comments below what you guys thought. Press the like button and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks, guys.